Hello everybody, uh, thank you for the attention uh, to this uh, uh, like topic like healthcare to Ukraine. Just, uh, we have a lot of uh, talks about uh, war, about recovery, about the building plane, but we understand that one of the main uh, topic and main reason why people of Ukraine who are every, everywhere in the world now uh, hiding from the war Will come to will come back to Ukraine is health healthcare system, and all the questions uh, are just why Ukraine is uh, the, the nice country to live. It's very often it's about the only. Uh, it's a lot of questions connected with education and healthcare. Ukraine uh, have uh, a controversial. So um, actually, just. Why we are thinking that uh, healthcare is a crucial? Uh, actually, I'm Igor Liski and uh, I'm involved in uh, different uh, spheres and industries in Ukraine, uh, not only in Ukraine. Uh, the, my main hobby or main expertise to build new companies, mostly industrial one. Uh, during the last uh, 10 years, we built already more than six green field or from uh, pro big projects from the scratch, mostly in paper industry, animal protein uh, processing, beehive project, it's the best honey producer in the world, I believe, uh, in uh, healthcare and uh, in IT. And uh, right now I want just to speak and share one of my favorite uh, is connected in healthcare. We are in healthcare in different uh, aspects. One of the we're building uh, uh, family clinics. It's, we have uh, about 40 now all over the Ukraine. But actually, my favorite is uh, connected with the digitalization of healthcare. I personally believe it's one of the most conservative industry, and uh, it's probably the last big industry in the world which is not digitalized yet. I mean, we know a lot of projects all over the world just uh, trying to uh, penetrate this market with digitalization, with a, tel with a telemedicine, with a, uh, online pharmacies, with different startups in, uh, <clears throat> in, with the innovation in healthcare. But as a whole industry, it's not digitalized yet. And we believe that we, in DocuA, especially in Ukraine, we have a lot of progress in that. And uh, I want just to share with you why we believe this is potentially one of the greatest companies in Ukraine. Because Ukrainian uh, healthcare system has some numbers. Uh, it was just, it's only connected with the private sector. And the real money we assess uh, what was just before the war, and uh, it's uh, comparing with European markets, it's quite small market, but we believe it will grow dramatically after the victory. And uh, but what is more important here, Ukraine is one of the most like innovative, accepted countries. You know that uh, uh, the government is strongly involved in. In digitalization of the government sector, and uh, we have one of the best known uh, project here, uh, which also uh, has like developing the, the digital market of uh, Ukraine. And also, we believe that uh, the the healthcare reform, which was started five years ago. Uh, have like traumatic, traumatically involved and helps us to to make it more digitalized and innovative. So I want just to give you some numbers and what is what is DocuA. I think it's I believe the biggest uh, digital hub in in Ukraine, uh, which is um, first of all involved in booking of just uh, where you, you can find your doctor. You can make an appointment, you can uh, make an online uh, consult consultation, you can, you can, after that, you can uh, take the uh, uh, 
analysis also and just get it uh, online with uh, special the, the result of the laboratory and the result of the analysis and then also we send it to the doctor and after after all you can get online all the pharmaceutical product as well so it's like a hub and we are trying to digitalize all the flow what the customer the patient needs during the during the treatment so we're trying to make the digital infrastructure of the healthcare and uh, we believe there is one and the only uh, such product in the world because a lot of companies is trying to attack uh, this industry from like from small niche and we're trying to build a whole system of that and uh, we have there are some numbers of our platform so but what we are doing here the main reason uh, why we invest in that it's not only about money or about numbers so but really wants to to innovate and to develop this market because we believe that uh, uh, we will save money we will save time we will help doctors to do it even better quicker we we provide the access to the health to health care uh, much easier we connect uh, people from all over the rich small regions of ukraine to the best doctors we provide uh, competitiveness and we provide service because uh, our main idea to make it easier and uh, and that the healthcare will be not about uh, hospitals or about mostly treatment, but to make people healthier first of all. And uh, for those, because I promise not to be too much involved in the product, but we really obsessive with the product itself because it's it should be really innovative, really just to. The customer journey uh, is our main uh, focus now, just to make it much easier. And uh, what we are building now is a healthcare ecosystem. So we connect doctors, patients, pharmaceutical, pharmacies, uh, laboratories, uh, and now also uh, healthcare insurance companies who make it like we, we are building the ecosystem and uh, make it most convenient and build it as a service so uh, i believe that the future after these uh, ecosystems and there's very soon the the world will will go this direction uh i know that if she stand up that i out of uh, time so uh, i think here i will say that the last point is I believe that this kind of business will make this planet and especially Ukraine a little bit better place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ruski. I hope we still have one minute, 16 seconds for a question that I'm very personally interested in. So the big talk of the world is AI. How do you feel AI will impact the kind of online hubs as you're developing and uh, overall med technology, medical technology, if you have an opinion on this matter. Yeah, actually, just a really trendy uh, like uh, topic, but uh, I personally believe that if you have the right data, and if you have the right system, and it's, it's organized digitally in the right way, so AI will really help you. And, and could you imagine that, uh, for example, if you have your analysis and just to collect it, so, for ages and then keep it in one place, just like that. The artificial intelligence, we together with the best minds and the best friends and the and the best uh, data, you can can help you just to make your recommendation. For example, you need you have probably you have problems with with something with your stomach, or probably you need some vitamins. Probably you have to go to the such type of doctors. So it really helps and change. It will be a revolution. Uh, things in uh, in healthcare, and I, I believe that the healthcare data will be the next oil. 
is all the people on the planet really really care about about their, their health and about the, the, the quality of, of, of their lives, especially of their relatives' children. So, and AI here could be not only about service, but it's really save lives, could uh, help doctors to make the right diagnosis, to make, to, to make predict the, the diseases more predictable, and to treat people in in the more innovative in or in the better way. We have one more question. We have perhaps we can allow for one more minute from from the room, please. Thank you. Yes, I have one question. And how will you make sure that my mother-in-law, that is 84 years old, will be able to use the system? Um, look, uh, it's it's not a miracle, but right now. I personally uh, use this platform to help my mother to order some pills and some medicine uh, to, 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 like, to get the second opinion with her analysis with another doctor, even who is outside Ukraine, and to make it just with my phone from here. I think it's a, it's a, it's a lots of advantages. It just uh, and when it is. This infrastructure is tied everything, so it's just like a question of uh, like your your will, how how you use it, how easy it's used. But it's 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 here, it's done. So all the we're trying to make it digital. When is it digital? Just a question, and uh, and also GDPR. Whom do you want to uh, like get the access with it to your sensitive data? That's the only question. Thank you very much, Mr. Tuliski. I personally find it an exciting project. Um, I live in Switzerland since 12 years, 14 years, in fact, and I struggle a lot because as much as we have family doctors as a participant of the system, they very rarely or close to never get updates from other specialized doctors. And when another specialized doctor is asking me, can you please send me your dossier from this and this and this and this doctor? I'm like, this is a day of work. So I think it would be helpful if we could scale uh, and uh, extend to international use. We wish you luck. With, uh, with, with your Ukrainian scaling and also internationally. And now we're moving from uh, um, process to product, from uh, um, support system to uh, product. And I'm happy to welcome uh, at the, on the stage our next speaker, Ms. Marina Shinkarova, a CEO of Farkas, a Ukrainian pharma producer, who will talk us through the evolution of the pharma industry in the past couple of years. Um, she will also cover some wins and obviously current challenges considering the military invasion. Uh, of course, it's a great honor to me to represent the uh, whole uh, Ukrainian pharmaceutical industry in the heart of the pharmaceutical world in Switzerland. Um, and um, I want to uh, start uh, from a few uh, very interesting examples what uh, uh, we are using here in Ukraine. Uh, from the first day uh, of the war, um, the bank house of the Ukrainian largest uh, company was bombed and burned to the ground. Uh, there were uh, uh, finished products and raw materials um, worth $1.5 million. But uh, in the end of 2022, this company returned and renewed the volume of pre uh, so uh, sales, and in 2023, it's continued to grow again and open it a new product site with Nebulus. It's a new innovation medicine, medicine forum. And during the war, uh, the second uh, biggest pharmaceutical company received permission to, manuf to manufacture mRNA vaccines only in our country. And uh, this fact can apply not only for uh, big top and uh, pharmacology um, companies of Ukraine. Uh, during the uh, last year, uh, the quantity of licenses um, not only uh, didn't uh, decrease, but even de uh, increased. Uh, in Ukraine, there are now uh, 128 uh, um, manufacturers of not only food supplements, but uh, medical um, uh, medical drugs, uh, and um, oh, sorry, I didn't use this. 
Uh, and a um, uh, very interesting fact, fact uh, is that uh, despite those old challenges, like destroying facilities, products, infrastructure, temporary occupation of territories, population migration, and reduced their purchasing power, and um, the market uh, only expired at six decrease in sales in 2024-2022 which was less than the predicted uh, 17 uh, till 13 degrees. So I think it's an incredible fact because 6% of degrees of the market is uh, not so many. And uh, we, uh, we now in 2023, we can uh, say that uh, our current market status uh, in uh, May of 2023 uh, have uh, exceeded as last years and uh, top of 20, not 10, uh, I uh, check up uh, 12 pharmaceutical companies uh, continue to grow. Uh, and uh, what we can uh, do with this matter with our market uh, that are now stabilized and has a significant potential for growth. And uh, why it can be um, like that? Because um, uh, pharmaceutical factor uh, in industry, it's uh, one of the most uh, innovative uh, industry of Ukraine. Uh, and um, 40, uh, 49 for now percent of uh, companies using now modern technologies in all manufacturing and sales process um, and um, uh, digitalization and e-commerce in Ukraine in these fields uh, is uh, on very high level. And uh, the pharmaceutical industry is uh, among uh, the leaders of the economy, second only to IT. Uh, this high level of productivity creates resources for investment in development and, um, and uh, a big uh, um, export potential. And uh, that's interesting that before the war, the exports of uh, pharmaceutical products from Ukraine increased uh, by 64% over the last uh, five years. In 2021, pharmaceutical companies sold uh, two, um, 245 million worth of medicine abroad compared to 184 million two years earlier. And it's important to know that now we continue to increase exports of medicines. And uh, I um, didn't say it before, but I represent now uh, an a association of Ukrainian pharmaceutical companies that uh, include uh, more than uh, 80 uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, and uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a personal is a founder and sell a small pharmaceutical company. Uh, that uh, situated now in Hostomo, if you know what I mean. But we uh, still work um, from April 2022. Uh, and uh, latest uh, very important strategic uh, imperatives um, in our country is that the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine has approved the inclusion of the pharmaceutical industry in the priority branch of the national economy. And uh, uh, the main... Uh, points uh, where Ukrainian pharmaceutical industry can be interesting um, not only um, for our country but for foreign country and especially for uh, Switzerland, uh, it's uh, such options. Uh, first of all, it's contract manufacturing of high quality products um, and uh, we can transfer new technologies and uh, production of innovative pharmaceuticals. And, um, um, second, uh, and I think it's uh, most uh, interesting um, our opportunity, it, it's uh, to, be, to become a um, uh, hub of uh, manufacturing, not uh, finished uh, products, but API, it's uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients. In such way, we can um, be nearest uh, point uh, to the Europe uh, for these raw materials. And... Um, uh, third uh, uh, option is conduct clinical trials, uh, for example, to replace the Russian market, where they are now suspended by most international companies due to sanction against this aggressive country. 
but uh, Ukraine has some sig has uh, significant potential in this area because, uh, for example, in United Kingdom, uh, annually um, uh, 125 clinical trials are conducted, and uh, in this time in Ukraine only 12 are conducted. So. And uh, in uh, my opinion, uh, a great uh, and big um, opportunity uh, for Ukraine uh, lives in scientific research. Because we have a uh, uh, big network uh, of uh, our uh, investigation uh, institutes, uh, they uh, need uh, a partnership uh, international, uh, but they uh, already uh, have a big uh, interesting uh, problematic that um, even now uh, the investigation, for example, a big program uh, about uh, antimicrobial, antimicrobial resistance, uh, genetic uh, interesting pro uh, projects, and um, and this is, uh, can be the uh, fruitful cooperation with Swiss scientific centers. This is the main point. This is the main point. Ukraine, I actually have a question for you as well. Thank you first very much for this very insightful presentation. The data is amazing. Um, I have personally been uh, drained to, direct, direct to the uh, data point about expert potential. You, you say that it's 64% of expert, expert uh, 64% of your production was expert oriented in the past five years. Mm -hmm. uh, has this done any changed in the last uh, year? Um, um, yes, I can say that um, it's not decreased but um, increase not for Europe, European culture. Because I imagine the, the internal need is much higher yeah, now, so that higher. probably must impact the external potential. Yes. For example, two of our biggest uh, pharmaceutical companies, they are eight and six and eight uh, months uh, working only for our own market to support army, to support civilian people, so it's uh, true. But uh, it's very important that we didn't uh, decrease. And 6% of uh, uh, decrease in the whole market uh, last year, I think it's incredible because uh, predicted so true. Amazing. Thank you very much for this data. Very, very insightful. And we wish you luck in collaboration with all the international experts here. In scientific field, I think it's more. We're going we're gonna to hear Marina on one more occasion later today. In the meantime, we are moving from uh, pharma to medical devices. We have two presentations today. The aim of them is to demonstrate to us how um, Ukrainian projects, uh, how Ukrainian developments can contribute to the accessibility of the cutting edge technologies to the Ukrainians, particularly wanted by the world, but in general, all Ukrainians that are in need and of um, rehabilitation, and in particular, the, in the area of uh, prosthetics. So I welcome to the stage um, um, to start with Volodymyr Bandura. A CEO of uh, is here of uh, Old Bionics and uh, Analytics Group, who will talk us through the uh, see, uh, who will talk us through the production of innovative bionic, my, bionic um, prosthetics in Ukraine and uh, a noble purpose um, that his company is pursuing in, uh, um, in in his product distribution. Very good. Um, so actually. For years, I worked in research and development, in new product development. And um, when the war started, one of the stories which, like, I don't know, uh, like, caught my heart and impressed me a lot uh, was uh, happened in the first weeks of war, uh, when there was a big attack on the Kyiv region, and many female families tried to evacuate and many of them, of the cars, were destroyed. So, and one of the children, um, like, suffered in one of such attacks. And uh, this girl, nine year old, uh, she was wounded in her arm. Her stepdad was killed in the car. They were hiding for more than, uh, like, almost for two days in some vaults to survive. Uh, but then, when they uh, came back and could get some medical help, uh, the arm of this girl had to be amputated and about the elbow. So, and I decided to help this family. I found their contacts uh, and I addressed my friends in Singularity University in the United States. Uh, and they recommended, like the co founder of the university, Peter Diamantes. Uh, recommended uh, a company, a producer in the United States. 
So um, we were able to like find financing, provide prosthetics for her. Uh, it was a very like big media story. Even uh, the wife of the president uh, <coughs> helped to organize uh, this trip and the ambas ambassador in the United States. Um, so it was a success. But in the meantime, I also saw that many, many more people need this help. Uh, we even tried, uh, by the way, together with Unbroken, who will speak later today, uh, to help other people bringing uh, the Bionic from abroad. Uh, but we noticed that it's very difficult to scale. First of all, it costs uh, really a lot of money. Uh, on top of that, you need to add a lot of costs related to logistics or to bringing people back and forth uh, to other countries, uh, getting some uh, professional support there and so on. And uh, it's really difficult to scale because you have the problem which affects at least like hundreds of cases and quite uh, realistically even thousands of cases now in Ukraine of this kind. So, uh, to scale it up, we decided to create our own project to develop our own bionic prosthetics. And uh, we did already the first phase. And uh, we have now uh, the bionic prosthetic which we can provide for below elbow amputation. And not only that, but we also developed innovative uh, technology which is very scalable, how we can help a lot of people in different regions of Ukraine. Uh, we can use specialized software and we can give it to uh, partners in different parts of the country. Uh, we need 3D scanning of the limbs. Uh, then we produce test sockets. But even this, uh, we now are trying to solve in an innovative way to produce the sockets using like cutting edge uh, 3D printing technologies which can uh, be flexible and adjust to the changes of the arm. So, um, and uh, we uh, produce then bionic prosthetics, which uh, can be controlled by uh, using uh, special sensors on the arm of the, uh, let's say, remaining limb of the end user. And you can use different grips uh, to solve like daily tasks, to hold different objects, uh, to move things around, to, I don't know, drive a car or whatever. And we believe this, um, let's say, is the right, the right approach to do. Uh, we do these prosthetics in individual dimensions, uh, which can feed the arms of every end user. And personally, we don't think it's the right way to do it in like specific dimensions, uh, which doesn't exactly feed the healthy arm of the user. So we try to make it individual. And... Um, the important thing that this approach, it uh, helps to scale the project in many aspects. Like first, we can uh, achieve substantial cost saving on the price of prosthetics. We can also achieve much faster operation and delivery in Ukraine. And another thing which is very important is that we can provide long-term technical support uh, because nobody is really addressing it with imported prosthetics. Uh, and support it long term, because it's the key issue. But these are complicated devices, and you need to have like long-term technical support. It's like running a car. You cannot uh, run a car in Ukraine, which needs to be serviced in Japan or in the United States or somewhere else. Um, so this is what we are doing. Uh, we are now developing innovative solution, which will be globally innovative for transhumeral prosthetics, which is for above elbow amputations. Further, we plan to develop solution for legs and to move step by step and to provide like a scalable solution inside the country. So uh, we provide these prosthetics for free. To do it so, it's expensive to produce, but to do it so, we do international fundraising. So if you are interested to, do, to support such a noble mission, and to help like specific people and to help to scale up this project, I would be happy to talk to you. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. It's a, it's a sad, impressive and inspiring story of the inception of your company. For you, I also have a question. So I, I also have a couple of questions, if I may. 
So you said that um, it's like a car, it needs to be serviced. Yeah. Um, how, how would you plan to set up the service center for this car? Is it, uh, is it complicated? How regular does it need to be? How, how, does it, how, re how regular does it need to happen? How many people do, do you need to have um, your patient serviced? Um, actually, in the first place, uh, we create uh, the assembly. So first of all, uh, this device is fully designed by our team and by Ukrainian engineers. And we partner with several big companies, including international ones like Siemens, uh, Paul Haber, and uh, Global Logic, which is a big IT development company. So um, we do, and so these electronics, these mechanics, it's all designed by our team. Uh, we produce it as electronics or some mechanical parts in different uh, parts of the world, including in the uh, European Union. So, and the assembly we do in Ukraine. So these are modern ways of producing things. They are very scalable, and they don't need that many people, uh, you know, to scale them. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the key thing which we want to deliver, is the long-term support. Uh, it's not just a question of regular support, which can be, like, in a way, planned. Uh, the arm of the end user can change, and you need to adjust the socket uh, this prosthetic can just fall or something can happen, like some mechanical damage. And if the producer is located in another country, it will take months and months, you know, to do any basic even take technical service. If we are inside the country, it's like one or two days and that's done. Excellent. And uh, um, I would like to also ask, um, where is the overlap with the neuro rehabilitation? Um, as for rehabilitation, uh, mostly our partners do it like uh, come, uh, there are big rehabilitation centers like I'm working present here. So uh, we are not like really going into that direction. We would prefer to partner with rehabilitation centers. Our uh, key solution which we want to uh, develop and continuously develop, we have a big road map of innovative improvements for years to come. Uh, so uh, we want to focus on producing of prosthetics, on improving every aspect of it, maybe in some, at some stage like new interfaces, but um, actually there are more simple solutions and which can be extremely efficient. So it's not the key ask, let's say, from the end user. There are many other things to do. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your answers. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your visit. We wish you luck with fundraise, with further R&D. There is a question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, actually, uh, we finished our development cycle. We started to work with the first candidates and to provide these prosthetics and to train them. Uh, we have over, we didn't like do much promotion, but the topic is so required that we have over 90 candidates waiting for help. And we're really looking for solutions to fundraise and to scale up our operations. Uh, in the next month, uh, the, these people, like this guy, they, they would receive it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The first concept Thank is there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, to continue with the topic of medical devices and medical technologies, I invite to the stage uh, Denise Gurak, who is a CEO and co-founder of ADAM, a company which is also focused on treatment of uh, war victims this time with the help of 3D printed um, um, printed bone implants. Over to you, Denis. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Thank you for inviting. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, so I apologize if it's going to sound like a pitch, because I'm a startup founder. I'm used to pitching. You know, they say you have to keep pitching all the time. So uh, that's like four years of my life. Uh, <laughs> but I'm uh, yeah trying to, you know. Um, so what I want to do here is actually uh, kind of create the narrative where um, and explain uh, how Ukraine, with its uh, engineering capabilities, can be a leader on the global stage. So, in some uh, industries like software, maybe in agritech, maybe in industrial engineering, in energy, etc., or military engineering, Ukraine is quite known in the world. However, um, in uh, med tech and in health tech, although um, as one of the previous speakers noticed, you know, there is huge capability in Ukraine 
uh, engineering capability in deep tech and hard sciences, and especially also in the healthcare industry. And why? Because Ukraine was an R&D center for Soviet Union during the Cold War. So all those uh, scientific schools, they still remain in place. They keep producing talent, and that talent acquires knowledge uh, from um, its teachers, etc. So um, all those engineers uh, really do need to, you know, a way to somehow uh, use their creativity and, and for the good, because that's how the engineering brain works. So um, with that preface, uh, I would like to explain a little bit of what we're doing. Um, so we're, uh, we're all Ukrainians. Um, I'm not an engineer myself. Uh, I have a background uh, in various things, but basically my whole career was about globalizing Ukraine. Uh, in some ways, so I did that in the actually healthcare industry and in, uh, and in defense industry. Um, and um, that's how this, pro this company was born. And uh, well, we're quite proud of what we've done by now. It has taken us four years, but now we are a... Uh, last week, we've been, uh, we've been awarded a... Uh, so last week we've been recognized as the second best 3D printing startup in US, uh, which was awarded by Society of Manufacturing Engineers, uh, and the global organization in the US, uh, which uh, we're super proud of. Uh, again, I'm not an engineer, but uh, it's like a testament to you know, Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian engineering power, and well, uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to use it for the good and uh, help uh, current situation in Ukraine and treating this war with so, um, just a little bit of the background. So, what we're doing, we're printing bones on 3D printers. We have our core IP in, uh, um, as a printer, a material, uh, which is a biomaterial which uh, eventually uh, degrades over time and bone grows instead of it. Uh, however, it's not something super new, okay? Because 3D printing technologies in healthcare, they exist for more than 20 years. First organ 3D printed was implanted in 1999 with human bladder. The person still walks with it. So what we've solved with our product is actually a, um, and that's what everyone is looking for in startups, um, is uh, a way to scale this technology and make it uh, global uh, and make it used, make it efficient. Because now, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, sorry. Because now you uh, can order 3D printed implant, let's say a bone implant, or even a soft tissue implant, like skin, or even heart valve, or uh, blood vessel, uh, potentially you could start ordering 3D printed hearts in a few years. However, it all doesn't make sense because they're super expensive. Even a bone implant in the US costs like a car uh, from the materials that we do, and that doesn't lead to scaling. Um, so that's kind of the problem that we've solved. We've tried to explain this uh, uh, in an easy way on, on the slide, um, um, but um, just a little bit of the background why we think that we can do it actually. So we have uh, quite a top-notch team of uh, various U.S. experts in military technologies development and in um, healthcare and in 3D printing. So for instance, our chief medical officer is one of the most renowned military surgeons in U.S., a former uh, Command and Surgeon of Joint Special Operations Command, uh, basically Delta, which everyone knows is a Delta Force. Um, our Chief Scientific Advisor is a former Director of uh, a Defense Advanced Research Product Agency, uh, the agency of the Department of Defense that invented Internet, AI, and uh, GPS. Um, others are also very renowned people, and that's just the few of them. So uh, we're trying to build you know, let's say um, the next big thing, sorry for the pitching, uh, but we, you know, by this time, we're quite confident that we cracked the problem. So uh, how, how our product looks like, it's a service for a hospital to print human tissues on site, on demand. Basically, imagine a decentralized platform where someone comes to a hospital, something is damaged, some tissue is damaged, uh, it could be printed right there. So people don't wait for transplant, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a turnkey holistic solution. It's, it's going to look like a 50 square meters 
room, GM key plus D facility in the hospital. It's all based on our proprietary quality management system, which is actually the core of the product, which binds it all together into streamlined workflow. Basically, like a platform for surgeons and hospitals to make it very efficient. And we're targeting printing of human tissues within a very short period of time. Uh, for bone implants, we can do this within one day. And why we're starting with bone implants is because um, it's just the least regulatory burden because all of those materials uh, that we use have been used in ortho practice for many decades already. We just took them, repacked them, and we just 3D printed them. Uh, but basically, they're pre-certified, and that's kind of why, actually, regulatory-wise, it can be certified in any uh, jurisdiction in the world, both in EU or in US. It's all based on one standard of ISO 1345 for medical devices. And actually, it's much easier to certify a small room in the hospital than a big production facility and much cheaper. Uh, so that's kind of the ideology. And if you wonder why it makes sense, it's because the um, world is going through supply chain problems, which were prompted by COVID in the first place now with the war, even more so. So this concept of decentralized cloud manufacturing is... Uh, being adopted by every industry in the world, especially in aerospace. What we're doing here is we are basically applying it to healthcare. So that's kind of the whole ideology. And that's uh, the description and benefits of, of this approach. Uh, that's how our workflow look, uh, looks. So basically, um, again, as I've explained, it's a platform, um, basically a an app. Uh, and we have this very, very, we've done this into very detail to, uh, you know, who needs to push which button and how it all works in its entirety from the start till the end, till the sterile 3D printed implant is implanted into a patient. Um, the beauty of it is that it's scalable. So next we're gonna go after soft tissues. Um, um, and who knows, maybe 10 years, 15 years from now, um, people will be able to print organs on site. Uh, I don't know, frankly, but it's, Actually, it's possible. It's not a technology problem. It's a business and market problem. So, yeah, hopefully that's going to happen sometime in the future. Um, we've uh, done it, you know, to do something like this, we had to go to the highest level. So, um, it took us really a long time. Uh, we overestimated, you know, um, um, the... So, obviously, this industry is super conservative, but we've been able to secure probably one of the best partnerships in the world that could exist. We've also partnered with Ministry of Health of Ukraine to start implementing this technology for war with victims in Ukraine. Um, you know, the demand will be there for years to come, for a decade at least. Um, even now, UN, which usually underestimates the victim's number, estimates it's uh, more than 1, 10,000 uh, civilians who need uh, uh, this type of treatment, so we estimate, you know, at least 100,000 people over the next uh, 10 years that will need uh, this kind of uh, innovative treatment. And uh, that's why we started doing it for Ukraine. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do this at Ukrainian hospitals because investors don't want to invest in Ukraine. Uh, however, um, however, um, uh, we got a support from Polish government. We've got support from a very innovative hospital in Poland. We're rolling out this system in Poland currently, and we're going to treat war victims from Ukraine there anyway. Um, so this is kind of like our journey, how we see it in future. Our ultimate market is U.S. markets. We conservatively project, you know, uh, 20 hospital hubs that will print in different geographies in U.S. Uh, in five years, starting from operation in U.S., which is going to be two years from now. Um, so. Hopefully you liked it. We're from Ukraine. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Dmitry. This is Steven. Yeah. Um, I'm coming from the medical technologies as well, and I work for a giant company uh, where 3D printing is uh, um, used massively, and uh, I think this is beyond impressive, this project been done in such short timing. So I just wanted to ask you one question. Uh, as a startup, which stage are you at? So it's Series A. We're raising Series A round. In the US, we have lead investor. We were planning to do this before the war. So literally in, on February 23rd, we had like a pre-final meeting with an investor who wanted to give the full amount. 
I sincerely thought that uh, Russians will not be so stupid to attack, you know, to do the full-fledged invasion. So we didn't go for it, but uh, yeah, then February 24th happened. So we had to pause a little bit, but we've been able, you know, uh, to, to progress much uh, over the last one and a half years. And uh, we're in a bit better position now than we even were before the war. However, you already received FDA and CE1. Uh, no, but we have gone through consultations and pre audits both in the US and EU because you cannot receive the C mark. It's actually quality management system certification or registration in how it's done in the US. It's called QSR. Um, you cannot do it before you actually build the facility. However, our QMS, we've done it from day one. It's very robust. It's like, uh, yeah, it's basically it's the core thing why it's possible. It's all, it all depends on the MS insurance. Uh, as a J&J professional, you definitely understand it. <laughs> Fantastic, amazing. We have a question here. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, you mentioned that this cost is extremely high for this, so uh, can you tell us more about Warsaw uh, or Polish partnership and this Warsaw Hospital? So who will cover the cost and uh, how it, this partnership will be organized? Um, yeah, so we are in the process of applying for the uh, European uh, grant uh, for establishing the facility, um, but the cost of surgeries for Ukrainian war victims will be covered by international donors. There are a few organizations that want to do this. Um, so unfortunately, again, if, you know, if it wasn't the war situation in Ukraine, we would have done it a year ago in Ukraine. However, you know, really no investor wants to give money in Ukraine now, unfortunately. Um, so we had to yeah, redo this whole thing and fortunately Poland stepped in. Uh, but uh, yeah, once the facility is up and running, this will be covered by international donors. Thank you very much, Denise. Um, Thank you now... so much. Uh, now we're slowly moving from uh, research and development to, uh, as already mentioned by Vladimir, to complementary industry rehabilitation. And I'm happy to welcome here uh, Salome Yakubechko, who represents the governmental project called um, Unbroken. Um, it's a rehabilitation center in construction, however, rooted, into the, rooted deeply into the um, uh, state heritage of care in uh, Ukraine. So, um, over to you. Hello, thank you. My name is Solomia Yakubachko. I'm the head of communication department uh, of our Unbroken Center, and today I want to uh, speak with you about our project. It's a uh, very important and pictures and very short video, which I want to uh, show you, because it's picture which was painted by the people who don't have the arms, so they don't have uh, even legs with our doctors, even the uh, 13 years old boy uh, who don't have arm, but now he can paint. So it's very important uh, for us to give uh, more opportunities uh, to people who was uh, injured by the uh, war. And they can uh, walk, they can sit, they can paint, they can have rehabilitation in one place. And this is our goal for the this year, next year, and for today to have uh, the all in one place to do such uh, happy faces as you see in this video and in this uh, boy. Uh, next, I would like to explain you where we develop. Yes, how we develop. We are the part of the first medical uh, union in Lviv. It's comprised of two big adult hospitals one children hospital and this our national rehabilitation center which appeared last year when the uh, full-scale uh, war uh, was started. The first medical uh, union in Lviv has uh, 2,500 beds and it's really a big association and we have emergency medical care, we have care for children, for uh, adults, it's Cardiac surgery, it's nervous surgery, and a whole complex uh, health in one institution. Uh, recently, uh, we uh, were made the uh, main burn center of Ukraine. Uh, this means that the most difficult patients who suffered both from the war and due to other diseases uh, should be 
it to us. And last year uh, it was uh, spring and uh, about evacuation trains, uh, ambulances and cars uh, came a lot of uh, injured people to our hospital and we need to do something, yes, to help these uh, people to do. So, National Rehabilitation Center. It's not only the prosthetic, it's a constructive surgery, it's a uh, hard complicated uh, surgeons, uh, surgical operations, it's a physical rehabilitation, of course, prosthetic, um, psychological rehabilitation, orthopedic and burn treatment. What it's mean? Uh, when an uh, injured patient come to our hospital, yes, if it's uh, Ivan without arm or without leg, he come to our institution and all of our doctors, which it needed, come to this patient. Patient don't need to look around, to go to the different hospitals, so to private or government, and to look uh, someone who help him. If he come to us, uh, the psychiatric doctor, the surgeon, the orthopedic, come and give the consultation to these patients. Uh, a lot uh, of patients um, looking for um, psychiatric uh, mental health help. In the psychiatric department we have also in our institution and uh, our medical union, it's uh, one medical union in uh, Ukraine, which have psychiatric department in uh, our hospital and it's very important for uh, everybody, not only for people who are injured by the war. We have almost uh, 200 percent made and um, there is a lot of work and a lot of people who will also need the prosthetic because war uh, is not over. This is uh, some numbers of um, what we do because we become the medical hub uh, because we uh, situated in Lviv, it's uh, the western part of Ukraine and for the last year we treat uh, half a million people, it's whole of our uh, facilities medical, and 13,000 is wounded from the war, and it's 2,000 children. I would like to show you the video, which is very important for us, and... Can we have sound, please? We have technical problem with sound. No voice, please. No matter what's local. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Zapra zapustite video.
it's really hard to tell about our project in 10 minutes presentation because we have uh, a lot of stories. We have thousands of such stories as you see uh, on the video and it's children, it's uh, adults. And uh, uh, I want to say that our goal is to uh, treat Ukrainians in Ukraine, to give them all opportunities, all uh, need quality mental health in Ukraine. and. Uh, we do this in our unbroken center. We are looking for cooperation. We are looking not only for fundraising, but also uh, about uh, studying and learning uh, with, with in other countries. And we want to uh, do everything for uh, our patients. Thank you very much, Salamir. I don't think you would have gotten more attention to this video if it wasn't muted. <laughs> so maybe that's something you need to use for the future. It's extremely emotional and I think your project couldn't be more honorable. Thank you so much for making it here today to talk us through it. And we wish you all the best in uh, engaging with the international community in search of uh, supporters, both in managerial, therapeutical or financial matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. And. Uh, To introduce our next speaker, who you already met, uh, I would like to use the words that I just overheard from uh, the other room uh, set by Victoria Tikipka from TA Ventures, and she put it as, as such. It's hard to rebuild the country with re without rebuilding the brands. So mental health is a, is a growing vertical, um, growing investment vertical, and definitely uh, mental rehabilitation is part of it. So I would like to once again re-welcome um, Marina, on this stage, to briefly talk us uh, through uh, a couple of insights from uh, mental rehabilitation aspect. This is a uh, very important to uh, understand that uh, as soon as we, uh, much earlier, it means uh, um, rehabilitation, uh, we can uh, be more successful in this uh, whole process uh, to uh, have uh, in the future not only healthy but um, socialized uh, person. And, um, uh, we know that uh, after um, uh, the moment when person uh, became a prosthetic, and uh, what must uh, this person to do next? So it's very good that Unbroken uh, uh, made uh, this big center, and uh, they have physical rehabilitation and men mental rehabilitation. But uh, mental rehabilitation in uh, Ukraine um, with um, this post-traumatic stress disorder, it's um, now. Um, many different uh, methods to cure with this. Uh, but we need one system, one uh, systematic um, um, level uh, to um, have this problem uh, on the um, highest level. And uh, uh, we have a, a, a big interest in um, uh, now uh, this project with the uh, Department of uh, Science and uh, um, Innovation of uh, Ministry of uh, Healthcare System and uh, Ministry of Education uh, to uh, make a big, um, uh, established big scientific and practical center to learn about uh, post-traumatic syndrome. And uh, it's already we have a methodological uh, team that already made a big course for uh, army uh, where they um, learned a dream. This is a um, uh, risk treatment uh, uh, method uh, to um, see the symptoms of PTSD on the early stage. And um, we know that Ukraine, um, unfortunately, uh, can be the world leader in this scientific study of PTSD. And uh, uh, now we have uh, many different, different um, uh, methods to uh, treat uh, this state. But we need to uh, establish this one big uh, center uh, and uh, uh, from the education of specialists, because it's a different education, not only uh, like uh, psychologists or psychiatric, uh, it's a like new uh, form of um, um, diagnosis, this uh, syndrome and uh, treat. Uh, and uh, we know that um, now in the uh, Institute of Physiology in uh, Kyiv, uh, uh, on the early stage, but in very successful stage already, um, uh, uh, already um, made some uh, um, 
good investigation about laboratory uh, laboratory markers of PTSD, that it can be the uh, innovative and uh, international uh, success. And um, we will be uh, in uh, all uh, contacts uh, with uh, this. And uh, in the end of uh, this is the second uh, presentation, we have uh, links uh, uh, what uh, already uh, uh, were done in Ukraine in this uh, field. Uh, it's a big course uh, to uh, learn the specialist uh, to early diagnose this uh, syndrome and uh, to be more successful uh, in this uh, mental um, socialization and mental treatment uh, of all uh, victims. And it's not, not only uh, war victims, it's uh, um, we, uh, we know that it's um, approximately 9 uh, million <coughs> Ukrainians uh, can be the uh, yeah. patient in this problem, with this problem.